Uh, okay, this is interesting. And I'm kind of really proud of this. Because my work evolved. You know, it's not like I've been doing the same thing. My work re evolved to if there's one thing that almost every kid on the spectrum uh, has in common is that they're no, they don't have friends. It's you know, almost universal. They don't have, when I say a friend, I mean a real, genuine, mutual friend. So if you, on the other hand, if you could develop that friendship, something has to be different in his mind to have that real, genuine friendship. So I have two kids here, Jared and Corey. And basically there are two parts in this. The kid has to be ready for a friendship. What does a friend mean? What does being a friend mean? That means, you know, you got to take into considera consideration the other person and so forth. So this is Jared when I first saw him. So he's really insistent. He has his mindset, he wants it, and he's going to scream and have a tantrum. It doesn't matter if he's in school or, or uh, at home. So he's not ready. A child like that cannot have a real, genuine, mutual relationship. I bring somebody else in here, and, and this is kind of, I think, interesting. Thank you. For what? That other kid is going to have more of an influence. I'm really against parents saying, what do you say? Say thank you. What do you say? I'm really against that. Because now the kid's responding to you. He has no idea what he's saying thank you for half the time. So at least I'm saying thank you for what? You know, that's important. Um, but he's going to listen to a friend or a potential friend who he cares about more than a parent or me because there's no real risk. There's risk with, it with another friend. And here's his, here, here's his potential friend. Uh, I'll give you a, a heads up on him. He's in Rochester Institute of Technology right now. He's in, he was accepted into three colleges. So, um, so he has his own problems, right? He's, he's never had a friend. He has Asperger's. And when people have these social groups with other kids who have Asperger's or, or autism, well, that's probably the worst thing. People say, who should be, well, get, get someone typical to be a friend. Why, why do you have to have an autistic group? But he, is, he was on the cusp of just, he, he used to be uh, ready for a mental institution. I was called one Saturday that they were ready to put him in a mental institution because of his issue of, of it's, his mother said he hated him. It's a whole other story. It's in the book. Corey, but, um, but we got through that, we got through a few things, and uh, he's going to wind up being Jared's friend. So now, Corey also needs to learn, evolve, to the point where he can be friends. So Jared has to come from a place where he's just so intense that he needs to have something the way he wants it, otherwise he gets a tantrum. And Corey has his own issues in terms of being perfect. I asked him, he got a 97 in a math test, and he, he said to me, he, he was so upset, he ripped up the test, and he didn't go to school for two days. <laughs> I mean, I said, would it have been better if you got a 67? He says, yeah, at least then I knew I would understand that I didn't understand something. But a 97, I should have gotten a 100. So, you know, he, he's not doing too well, has no friends, 
And so he needs to evolve. He needs to be taught to be ready for a friendship. So this slide is talking about how he is set. No matter what happens in his life, he's not going to be happy. So this is the slide telling you about that. Now, this is important. I asked him if he could not get like, past, I think I, if he not get past, I think I misspelled past, if he could not get past not enjoying himself. In other words, he doesn't enjoy himself, he makes sure he doesn't enjoy himself, but could you get past that? And you're going to see him think. And I purposely left, whatever it is, eight, nine seconds of silence, because when you ask somebody a question, ask your kid a question, give them time. Sometimes these kids need time to, to process it. Don't fill in. Don't prompt. If he can do it himself and surface, have this answer surface, you know, let him have that. And that, that's, what's, that's what's here. So you, so you get not going to be positive. It's my job, it's your job as a parent to turn that around. Just the fact that he said that. And we all know this from all the self-help ideas out there. We all know that self-awareness is a key. Well, here this kid is telling you what his problem is. Let's see if we could turn it around. All right, let's say you got 100 on a test. How'd you feel? Well, I think I would only feel good for a moment. You would feel good for a moment? Either there would be something else about that situation, like, well, I only got 100, but I didn't do well on that project yesterday, or there would be something totally uh, uh, not related, but still going on the day that makes me mad. Like, I, I got a hundred, like this week I got a hundred on the ELA test and, all, and all, I was one of only two people that got that hundred on that yeah, ELA that, test. That's a, but I still didn't feel that great for, it didn't make my day. It, it, it should have made my day. It should have made my day, but instead of feeling great about this hundred, you wind up with a lot of negative thoughts of some sort. Yeah, you know, I always find the negative of something. If it's not related to the subject, then I can just bring the unrelated negative in and you can yeah. destroy that. So if we could practice somehow feeling good or getting in touch with that part of yourself that feels good about something, uh, maybe maybe that's maybe that's one of the keys to to just, you know, be happy. When you feel good about something, you can tolerate that easier. You can let that stuff go. If that becomes something more prominent in your mind, the good feeling. So you like that idea? So making something positive more prominent in your mind? Yeah, yeah. You can try it, the hell that would you have that moment of feeling good. Let it be more than just a moment. Okay. And we can try it. We can see how it works. That's big. Oh my god. 
Oh, wait, wait, don't tell me. Do you feel good? Do you have a moment of goodness? Yes. Because you figured out the, the trick. Yes. Okay. Do you want to talk about it? you want to just feel it? Let's keep that for a moment. Okay, I'm trying. You're keeping it. You got it. You got that feeling of goodness. Oh my God. I figured it out and I know I'm right. Yes. That's a great feeling. <laughs> so this was one session. Self-awareness. That's why the progress, once you get your kid, once you get what is underlying the issue, and with kids who are verbal, you know, you ask the right questions, they might actually tell you. It's, it's amazing. But you know you may know anyway. Once you get that, then he's ready to, to make that leap, to, to make it, a, in this case, he was able to feel this sense of, he was ready for it. He's asking me. He said, you heard him. He asked me, like, you know, how's that going to work? Oh, I love that question. Because <laughs> that's my job. And that's going to be your job as parents. Yes, you're going to know how it's going to work. So he gets what, he's, what he wants for himself. Here they are. Um, and, I, and, and I just want to alert you with uh, this. When they're together, it doesn't happen automatically. Just last week, somebody said, I'm going to put my child in a residential setting, which he did, and uh, it's going to force him to eat with other kids, to talk to them, to be, have friends. And No, 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 no. You, you know, if it was going to happen naturally, it would have happened. We need intervention. An intervention in, in the sense that we have to know what to do. I needed five or six sessions with, with these kids together, right? First they had to be ready for friendship. Then they needed maybe five or six sessions. After that, they saw each other every single week. How do I know that? Jared, who's a little obsessive, he had a, he called, let him be obsessive called Corey every week, every week for, I don't know, a year until Corey went off to college. They were, and then they really missed each other. But remember, Corey never had a friend too, even though he might be a little more, a, a lot more intellectual and went off to college, where Jared doesn't want to go to college. That's fine. But Corey never had a friend until Jared. And when I talk about mutuality, you're going to see this uh, this little clip and just keep in mind I interrupt once but that one time gives you insight into what I needed to do when I had these two kids together I had to enhance their communication with each other otherwise they'll just go further apart remember these are two Asperger kids and uh, and and they're you know naturally going to be socially isolated let me just say one thing. Parents say all the time, I have an Asperger, is it better to be in a group of Asperger's or to be with, with typical kids? My answer is always the same, typical kids. In this case, Corey was one step away from being successful in college, being pretty typical himself. And that, I think, was great for Jared and great for him as it turns out. But I'm just saying, in general, when they do social skills training, I was just reading an article yesterday, there are at least five sources to say that social skills training for Asperger's in groups of, with Asperger's kids just don't work. I mean, it, common sense tells you it doesn't work. So, in any case, here's a, 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 a clip of them being together as friends, and just note the one time I interrupt with some clarification of what word is it? Um, counter. What's that? Counter. Counter. I knew there was a miscommunication. So you'll t you'll you'll look out for that. My dad did. What did he do to you with that talk? He attached um. I was supposed to bear up to me. How you manage to dodge it? With a remote clock. No, I had you mean how you manage to dodge it to explode in the bedroom. I countered it. What does that mean? 
uh, you'll, you'll see in a fight. So this counter means? Okay. Counter means to fight against. Oh, you mean you punch it back? And there's also an artery you took from a bad guy? Well, did you? No, there are no tools yet that I've taken. Was he the first, was that show for the first boss? Was it? Was he? You was that show the first boss? Yes. No. Sure, Croc was the first boss. Uh, so is he going to see in the first battle? And what type was that? Oh, that's me gliding. No, I meant that was it. It went out. Oh, that's detective mode. See? How did it work? It makes things, it makes things glow. And it gives off the useful information. Wow. Mommy, want to see me explode this barrel? Okay. With a battery. 